says could take several months. It's 9 away. It's still uh, this morning. Lauren Coomer is checking out uh, a big sale this morning in Grand Rapids. Hey, Lauren. Hey, Elliot, you guys remember Ginny B. Jones books or how about Lincoln Logs? They've got it all here at the Just Between Friends sale. It's kicking off today, opening to the public just a few minutes ago. We've got more after the break. To say Escanaba in the moonlight is a unique story would be an understatement. So coming up, we're going to be sitting down with some members of the play who are bringing that deer camp tale to West Michigan. But we got to get to birthdays. Silver, you are 16 years old. Happy birthday to you. Have the best day. Hadley is officially 11. Have a great day, Hadley. Look at this swimmer ready to jump in. Callan is three years old. Skyler is officially double digits. Have a great day, Skyler. Grayson, also double digits. Happy birthday, buddy. Have a great day. And Michael, nine years old. Have a good day, man. How about Landon, nine years old, Pokemon fan? Have a good day, Landon. Hunter is seven years old, looking great in that school picture. Happy birthday. Kylin, <laughs> doing it right. If you're not eating cake like Kylin is, you're not doing it right. Uh, happy birthday to you. If your child has a birthday coming up, send it to us mornings at fox17online.com. Welcome back. This is such a big event that so many families look forward to each spring and fall. We're talking about the Just Between Friends sale. Yeah, it's a popular event returning to Comstock Park this week, and that's where we find Fox 17's Lauren Coomer joining us this morning. Lauren, first of all, you just had Junie B. Jones books. Love those as kids. So it just shows you everything. <laughs> yeah, guys, they have... <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Both Junie B. Jones and the Magic Treehouse brings back a lot of childhood memories. Uh, this was my personally, my favorite section so far this morning. I was a bookworm as a kid. And with National Reading Month, what a great way to come out and uh, get some books for your kids. But there are so many things here at the Just Between Friends sale from books to, to toys to clothing to accessories, everything in between. You can find it all here. And the doors just opened a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. There has been a steady stream of of traffic coming through. We are joined by Melanie, one of the co-owners of the Just Between Friends sale. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Thanks for being here. So talk about this first day. You guys are finally open to the public this morning, um, and we've been seeing a steady flow of customers so far. This is going to continue throughout the day. It will. So it's we're a twice a year pop-up sale. So parents look forward to this every spring and every fall. This is our spring sale, and they know don't miss it because they're going to find everything they need for their kids because we know that they grow, and it's expensive expensive to keep up with those gross birds. And one of the things we've been seeing a lot of this morning are wagons. People are bringing in those to fill up. And you said by the time they reach the checkout, they're generally full, if not um, needing more space. So talk about um, all of the things that are offered here for parents, grandparents, family, friends. Yeah, they're gonna, you're going to be able to find everything you need to help clothe, feed, entertain, and just use for your kids to help uh, you know, in the day-to-day -day activity and over the course of the year. We have a hold area, so if you fill those wagons up too full, we have IQ bags for you to use but if those get too full we have a whole area we can put things on hold and keep shopping and fill it up so it's very nice to be able to do that and then once you're ready to check out it's an easy checkout process we take cash and credit and you'll be able to check out quick and easy and it's I mean all organized like a big department store so you'll find everything you need at um, in the different sections that you're shopping now let's talk about the sale itself you know where there's so many sections thousands of items here um, but all of these items are sold by West Michigan Michigan locals as well, purchased by West Michigan locals, maybe not. Um, so talk about that and how you're kind of supporting other families as well by being here. Completely. It's a community event and it's families helping families. And we're blessing, you know, one family is blessing another family and putting another life into something that maybe their kids outgrew or don't play with anymore. A new child is going to find joy in finding these new items here, for, new to them items. And it's great to see these things get reused and repurposed, helps the landfills and it also helps helps, you know, the other families who are just sometimes struggling to make it because things are so expensive and it's they're more expensive than they were last year even. And this is a way for families to say yes. I want to talk about just the people that you see throughout this sale. I mean, you're holding this twice a year. Yesterday during the pre-sale, you saw 55,000 items sold. So talk about that and what people need to know when they're coming to shop. 
Well, be prepared, dress comfortably, bring water and snacks. We have people who come here and shop for six, eight, 12 hours <laughs> um, because they need to stock up on their kids' things and they have a list of things to get. And some people have one child and others have two, three, four, six, eight kids. It's, it's a one-stop shop for all the families to come out and be able to do. And um, just when you come out here, come with patience because it's going to be very busy. Um, we're going to be running registers to get it through. So just know that we um, we'll here, we're here twice a year. So just don't miss it. Today is um, our opening to public. We're three dollars, but if you mention you saw it on Fox, you can get in for free. And also today, Melanie, thank you so much for all the great information, is a meet and greet with a local influencer as well as a teen thrifting event tonight. So uh, if either of those sound like some fun or you just want to come out to the sale, we have all this information up on our website, fox17online.com. For now, we'll send it back to you guys in the studio reporting in Comstock Park. I'm Lauren Coomer, Fox 17 News. Hey, good morning, everybody. Here's a shot I thought I'd uh, put up there. Treetop Ski Resort up in Gaylord. Sunrise coming up. They still have a 20-inch base out there, and they are still open. I'll have your ski reports tomorrow. Tomorrow's Thursday. There's a couple of more of them that are closed, but we'll do that on Thursday in all the newscasts. Uh, Muskegon Pierhead, look at the blue sky and the sunshine out there in the weather headlines. Another unseasonably warm day today. Uh, this is the last of the really warm ones, and we'll start to trail the temperature off. And by the time we get into next week, Monday, we'll probably only be in the 30s, maybe some snow showers. That's our last headline there. Rain and storm chances coming in here tomorrow. There's nothing on radar now. We are dry. Temperatures are in the 30s across our northern counties because they've been clear all night. We're 44 in Grand Rapids, 50 in Hastings, 52 in Kalamazoo, and 51 right now in uh, 51 in Kalamazoo. And uh, you see those temperatures that were across our southern counties in the upper 40s to around the lower 50s. So it's been warmer there because there's been some cloud cover there. We've got still mild temperatures off here to our south and west, but unlike yesterday, we won't be tapping a southwest wind. It'll be east northeast, so that'll probably keep us a few degrees cooler, but make no mistake about it, it's still going to be a great looking day here uh, with not much going on. I can't rule out maybe a shower cropping up this afternoon across our southern counties, but most of us will probably stay dry, mostly sunny to partly cloudy today, a shower south. 66 for the high with an east northeast wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here's our future track uh, map. It shows that the weak cold front moving through here. And north of that across the southern counties, maybe a shower this afternoon. There'll be a better chance of some more showers and a few thunderstorms later this evening and through the overnight hours. And then tomorrow, likely a widespread prolonged rain with even some thunderstorms in there. Some of those could approach severe levels. There is a slight chance of that from Grand Rapids southward. I'll show the outlook in just a minute, but the storm system will stay across the lower Great Lakes and never really get in here. We could have a few lingering showers on Friday morning, but that will quickly move out. Otherwise, we're just left with dry conditions and mainly cloudy skies for our Friday. So for tonight, uh, from Grand Rapids southward, there's a general thunderstorm risk, just uh, maybe a crack of lightning or some thunder, nothing severe. But tomorrow, that ramps up a little bit. Level one out of five, we get to a marginal threat along and south of the N86 corridor. One or two of those cells could trigger a severe thunderstorm warning. It would be for hail or wind more than likely. It would just be marginally severe. But the better chance of severe weather is on the other side of Chicago, through St. Louis, and then down into Arkansas there. How much rain are we talking about? This looks like a widespread soaking uh, between uh, tonight, Thursday, and then into early Friday morning. Probably about a half inch to about an inch is what we're thinking. The highest probability for precipitation is tomorrow, 90% there it drops the 30% chance for early Friday and then later on Saturday there could be a shower rain snow mix or a chance thereof on Sunday and then Monday some snow showers about a 30% chance of that our temperature is really going to be flip-flopping here over the next several days mid 60s today lower 50s tomorrow with some showers maybe a rumble of thunder in there 48 on Friday with some lingering morning showers most of Saturday looks dry but a p.m. and nighttime shower can't be ruled out 52 there 42 rain or snow on Sunday and then a few snow showers possible on Monday with highs only around the mid 30s and we're still only in the 30s for next week Tuesday 43 is a normal high so you can see way above normal today and then below normal by the time we get to next week that's weather it's 920 all right thanks Kevin 920 still had this morning well, if you're in need of a good laugh, you're in luck. There is a hilarious play coming to West Michigan, and you might be familiar with the movie it inspired. Coming up, we have some members of Escanaba in the moonlight here to share more about their upcoming work.
Well, some might say the UP is just kind of another world. Things move at a different pace for UPers. Deer season, kind of like a national holiday up there. Yeah, and uh, coming to the Grant Fine Arts Center later this month is a comedy play that shares the hilarious antics of a middle-aged UPer looking to back his very first buck to avoid shaming his family. <laughs> so for those that don't know much about the <laughs> Superior State play, there are a few Could guests it up uh, a little bit more, yeah. here in studio. I should have let you read that yeah. one, right? <laughs> <laughs> to uh, tell us more about the details. You've got two actors in the play and also the director. Uh, for those that don't know, just tell us about Escanaba in the Moonlight. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, Escanaba in the Moonlight's uh, a play written by Jeff Daniels, um, and it takes place at Deer Camp, the Sony Deer Camp, actually, in 1989. Yep. Um, and they relive, uh, relive some memories of a previous Deer Camp where Things just go completely haywire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sounds like a funny premise. Yeah, I love the premise. And why did you guys decide that you wanted to uh, choose this play for you guys as a center? Well, um, we were actually slated to do a different show. Okay. Um, and um, some things, circumstances beyond our control, mainly Easter, um, <laughs> yeah. got in the way. Mm -hmm. And so we were looking at something we could put together really quick. And most of the our, our actors who had been in Escanaba in the Moonlight the first time we did it were still around. And we said, hey, that's one we could throw together really fast if they're willing to come back. And everybody in the cast that was still here said yes. So I only needed to find two actors. I needed to find Albert Sodi, who was being played by Ron, and um, Ranger, Ranger Tom. Tom. And Ranger Joey. Tom had passed away last year. Okay. So, and he was a board member and a friend of Lionheart, and you know, great guy, uh, always willing to be a part of it. So I reached out to his son, who's a college age student now, and said, hey, would you play your father's part? Mm. And he said, yep, and yep. that was it. That's Boom, special. we threw it together. What a nice and tribute. Um, we're having a great time with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know, it sounds like if you go to watch the show, you're gonna have a great time. Uh, other than a lot of laughter, what can we expect? A lot of laughter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure a lot of Michiganders are going to relate to, oh, yeah. when, you know, if they've yeah. ever been to deer camp, which is something I had to educate myself about. Right. <laughs> but yeah, um, they will see some things like, oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So. And it's fun. I mean, just seeing you guys here together, you can tell how much fun you guys have yeah. together. So yeah. I feel like that always <laughs> comes across on the stage too. All right, if we want to come out and we want to see the play uh, and see what it is all uh, going to encapture, where can we go for that? Uh, well, you can go to our website, Lionheart Productions, right? Mm -hmm. dot com. And or Dot org. Dot org. org. Excuse me. Dot okay. org. Gotta and, get that uh, right. Gonna, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're only doing it one weekend this okay. year. We're uh -huh. starting on Thursday as our opening night, the 21st, and we're running it the four days and then two shows on Saturday. And it's at the Grant Fine Arts Center in Grant, Michigan, um, attached to the high school. So it's. Um, do you have yeah, to dress fun, fun. like a youper, or uh, <laughs> <laughs> you have to come in your oh, flannel? Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 no. You won't be turned away. <laughs> okay. You won't be turned away. Because you're all a bunch of Winnebago <laughs> driving. That's right. <laughs> <That's laughs> <right. laughs> Three belch and yeah. white wine drinking. Yeah. 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 So fun. We'll get all the details, of course, linked on our website, too. Good luck with the show, guys. Thank you so much for Thanks. coming in. Thanks appreciate for having it. We appreciate it. <laughs> all right. Well, us trolls will have some more news and weather after the break. This morning, we're learning more about the hours that followed the Oxford High School shooting as a trial for the shooter's father continues. What was said about his actions after learning of the tragedy? TikTok is facing pressure from U.S. lawmakers over ties to the Chinese Communist Party. National reporter Stephanie Liebergen giving us a look at the vote to ban TikTok. That's happening today. And a cycling club growing in the sport here in West Michigan. Our Jack Carone shares how they're helping get kids involved. You're watching Fox 17 Morning News. We were talking about Escanaba a few yeah. minutes ago. We were wondering, Kevin, have you ever been 
to uh, I don't Escanaba believe up I in had. the UP? If I, if I have, I just passed by it briefly. I, I just booked, uh, I'm going to be camping in the UP in late July. Okay. Oh. I just booked my set. I'm so excited. Where? Uh, right outside of Picture Rock, so way north. Kind wow. of. If you, That'll if, be nice. Which way do we do this here? Uh, <laughs> I think <laughs> <right> here. <laughs> yeah, okay. You know how you do that? Yeah. Yeah. Am I doing it right? Yeah, yeah that's uh, impressive. But yeah, so any talk of the UP, I, I'm so excited for like summers mm -hmm. up there. It's so it's beautiful. It's beautiful up there, yeah. Lake Superior is beautiful mm -hmm. too. Cold. It's cold, but, but it feels yeah. good in late summer. It's refreshing. Yeah, sure. the color, the color of the water is just yeah. gorgeous. Of course, especially at Pictured Rocks. Oh, it's like yeah. that green, I've, bluish I've color. I've never been to Pictured Rocks. I'll have to check Kevin, that out. Kevin, what are you doing? Oh, I also have not You've been to... You've lived here longer than me. Come on. No, yeah, that's true. And I have not been to Taquaman and Falls oh, either. that's beautiful to too. Out. Wow. You and the yeah. wife would love I've that. I've been to... So, see, we go south because we like it hot. You want it sure. warmer. Yeah. Yeah. So we're down in the Caribbean. I can tell you any of the Caribbean islands you want to know about. Barbados and I have there, so we'll have to swap swap ideas here. Gotcha. Uh, but, hey, it's feeling almost tropical, not quite, but it's been warm this week and we've been oh, loving it. Certainly looks like a great looking morning. Look at this, folks. Uh, blue sky, sunshine. Looks like you'd get up in the tropics and you'd see this in Stanton, in Muskegon, in South Haven, and in Grand Rapids. Things look good. We don't have anything on radar. We pull out to a wider perspective. There's been some cloud cover uh, through the overnight hours and the early morning hours across our southern counties. That's kept the temperatures from dropping too far there. We'll see mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies, but I can't rule out maybe a shower cropping up this afternoon across our southern counties. That's where the temperatures are warmest there. 51 right now in Kalamazoo, 53 in South Haven, 48 in Battle Creek. We're in the mid 40s across our central counties and the 30s up there across our northern counties where the skies have been clear all night. Your Wednesday planner, 57 degrees at 11 a.m., 63 at 2 p.m. We'll top out at highs in the mid to maybe the upper 60s, and by 6 p.m. we're still hanging on. The temperatures in the mid 60s with mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies. We'll have the chance of some showers and thunderstorms overnight, a better, more widespread, prolonged chance coming in tomorrow. Some of those storms could be on the marginally severe side. We'll look at that and talk the chances of some snow showers coming up for the beginning of next week. Yeah, it'll be that cold. We go from almost 70 to down into the 30s by Monday. That's all coming up in just a few minutes. It's 934. What a plunge. All right, Kevin, thank you. Prosecutors have just now rested their case against James Crumbley, the father of the Oxford High School shooter. He's facing four counts of involuntary manslaughter, one for each of the students shot and killed by his son in 2021. Tuesday in court, testimony focused on the teen's mental health in the time before the shooting, as well as his parents' efforts to avoid getting arrested after they learned what happened. Video showing James and Jennifer Crumbly in the back of a squad car while investigators searched that home. They say inside they found a gun safe, though the password had never been set up. James brought that gun used in the shooting, bought it, excuse me. Prosecutors claiming his failure to safely store it has now led to that shooting. Prosecutor, prosecution also continued to argue that James failed to address his son's calls for help, reading pages from a handwritten journal found in the shooter's backpack. So in it, he writes, quote, I have zero help for my mental problems and it's causing me to shoot up my school. He continued on to say, I want help, but my parents don't listen to me, so I can't get any help. Shooter's mother, Jennifer Crumley, had already been found guilty of involuntary manslaughter charges. She is set to be sentenced next month. They are the first parents in the country to face criminal charges and a shooting committed by their child. Meanwhile, President Biden is preparing for a trip to Michigan tomorrow where he'll meet with union members in Saginaw. Before that, he's going to take a trip to Wisconsin. The president's campaign has put a lot of focus on industrial areas of Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. Donald Trump, who won those states in 2016, Biden then flipped all three of them to blue in 2020. Today, the House of Representatives is now expected to vote on a bill that could lead to a ban of the popular social media app, TikTok. Scripps News congressional correspondent Stephanie Liebergen explains why lawmakers are pushing for the bill in the name of national security. TikTok has been a lawmaker target for years, but there is new momentum on Capitol Hill for forcing the Chinese linked app to make changes or risk being banned in the U.S. entirely. TikTok can continue to exist in the United States as long as it's not effectively controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. Representative Mike Gallagher has been working alongside his Democratic colleague, Representative Raja Krishnamurthy, to eliminate any connection between TikTok and China. 
Banning the social media app is not the goal. It's about separating TikTok from its parent company, ByteDance, and the Chinese government. And that will make for a better user experience. People won't have to worry about manipulation of algorithms. They won't have to worry about a hostile foreign adversary potentially manipulating the news uh, that Americans consume. China has national security laws that can compel businesses to turn over information or assist with intelligence gathering. In 2023, TikTok CEO promised to put a firewall around U.S. user data, but that was not enough. Since 2022, TikTok has been prohibited on government-issued devices. And last year, the Committee on Foreign Investment in the U.S. threatened to ban TikTok if China didn't divest, but that threat hasn't become a reality yet. Lawmakers say the House's bill, which was unanimously approved by the Energy and Commerce Committee, does not infringe on Americans' First Amendment freedom of speech. We don't want to censor any type of content. This is not about a content-specific law. This is about um, the manner in which uh, the CCP controls ByteDance, the parent of the platform at issue. After a push alert in the app, TikTok users flooded congressional offices with phone calls opposing the bill. But lawmakers say that is exactly why Americans should be concerned. TikTok actually put up a notice where they blocked uh, an individual to actually get on TikTok unless you called your member of Congress and told them, you know, not to vote for this legislation. But that's just an example of how they can manipulate data and influence Americans for their agenda. There is precedent for this type of forced sale. In 2012, the Obama administration prevented a Chinese company from investing in a wind farm that was near a U.S. military base. And in 2020, the government forced China to sell its interest in Grindr, a gay dating app, all in the name of national security. Stephanie Liebergen, Scripps News, Washington. The bill's future in the Senate is still unclear, but if it reaches President Biden's desk, he has said that he will sign it. If that happens, ByteDance would then have six months to sell TikTok before the ban would go into effect. This morning, we're learning a Detroit Free Press columnist and author Mitch Album has, uh, was among a group rescued from Haiti as the country is now in a state of emergency. Album sharing their update on Facebook last night saying he and his wife are now home safe and they evacuated the country overnight with eight volunteers. He was visiting an orphanage uh, which houses about 60 kids and was in an area that was forced to shelter in place. Local gangs there burned and shot up parts of the country over the last few weeks to prevent the prime minister from from returning to the country. That prime minister resigned yesterday. U.S. State Department praising that move, saying it paves the way for a more peaceful transition of power. It also says an additional $100 million will be given to the country to help the Caribbean national achieve peace and stability. New this morning, our warming weather might have you thinking about getting back on a bike. And a Michigan-based cycling group is working to expand in West Michigan to help get kids into mountain biking. Our Jack Caron has more now about their mission. When you think of franchising, fast food and store chains usually come to mind. But for the 906 Adventure Team, it means connecting communities through biking. And now it's hitting West Michigan. There was a, what I perceived to be a, a, a missing opportunity in the community for kids and adults. Uh, in, the, in the cycling community. The void was filled when Todd launched the 906 Adventure Team early in 2017. Others soon followed. Uh, the first team from Delta County came to us and said, hey, we want a team, how do we do it? The group kept growing, maintaining leadership in Marquette, but giving communities what they need to start. And then from there, we've been adding a team or two uh, pretty much every year. Now, it's here in West Michigan. Sent an email to Todd in December, um, and things escalated quickly over the course of like a week, uh, and made the call to go all in. This mountain biking club isn't just about competing. This is not a race team. Um, there's a very low barrier to entry for this, uh, and you're going to be surrounded by supportive people. Support coming from all directions. Already up to 40 volunteers that have signed up for this, um, and that is like far exceeding what our initial goal is. The ultimate goal, building confidence in youth. We refer to our programming as youth resilience development, not mountain bike skill training. Registration for the Grand Rapids Adventure Team opens May 4th with their first official ride starting in June. To learn more and even get involved, check out our website at fox17online.com. Reporting in Grand Rapids, Jack Carone, Fox 17 News.
Perfect day for it too, right? It sure is. 941 still ahead this morning. Speaking of sports, Grand Rapids Christian and Grand Rapids Catholic Central facing off in the boys' high school basketball playoffs. Thomas Cook will share highlights from that game.